Welcome to part 12, creating visual effects in Blender. In this video, we're going to explore a new feature of Blender called creating a shadow catcher. Now, several videos ago in this series, I created a video on creating a shadow only plane in Blender, specifically in the Blender Cycles render engine. But in this new version of Blender, Blender 2.79, there is a new feature which allows you to very, very easily create a shadow only or a shadow catcher plane in the Cycles Render Engine with really only one click. So we're going to explore that in this video. I'll do it very, very quickly at first, and then we'll get into creating a short, mini, fun little project in which we'll create a spaceship sitting on top of a field in a video that I shot. Let's go ahead and jump in. Of course, if you like this video or if you learned something, go ahead and click on that like button below. And if you want to see more videos just like this one in Blender and in Tech, click on that subscribe button as well. Of course, to follow along with this video, you will need this new version of Blender, which came out last week as of this recording date. Uh, Blender 2.79 has this new feature. If you're using Blender 2.78 or anything older, it will not have this feature. You will not be able to follow along. Of course, you can get new versions of Blender at www.blender.org. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. I'll click on my splash screen. The first thing I want to do here for the quick version is I'm gonna press Shift A on my keyboard. Shift A of course brings up the add menu. I'm gonna add a new plane. And that plane of course, when you have it added to the middle, it's the same size as your default cube. So I'm gonna tap S on my keyboard and move my mouse and that will make the, the plane bigger. And I'll click to put it right about there. This cube is now sitting exactly halfway through the plane because the plane is, is at exactly zero um, up and down on the z-axis. So I'm gonna move this cube up one on the z-axis. So I'm gonna press G to grab, and then I'll tap Z to move it only up and down, and then I'll press one to move it only up by one, and then I'll press enter. So I pressed G and then Z and then one and then enter to make it go up by one on the z-axis. To make a shadow catcher object in the cycles render engine, you have to be using the cycles render engine. So this is a very important step. Uh, don't miss it. This is the most common question I get. Why don't my buttons look the same or my nodes look the same as yours do in the video? Well, most people just forget to change their render engine to cycles render. That's very, very important. To access the new shadow catcher only options, let's first take a look at our scene. So I'll press zero on my number pad to get through my camera view or of course you can go down to view and camera number pad zero will get you there as well and i'm going to change my camera's view a little bit so i'm going to check this little lock camera to view button and this is on the side properties panel which you can get to by clicking on this little plus or by pressing n on your keyboard with your mouse in the 3d viewport that'll bring that up too if i check this little box i can now uh, when I'm looking through my camera, I can orbit my camera. And if you have the, the option in Blender settings, so user preferences right there under the file menu, if you have the option called um, rotate around selection enabled, uh, that means that when you have something selected, you can orbit around it. So that'll help you out a lot. I'll just kind of go to somewhere that's fine right there, that camera angle. And I'll click on render. Again, we're using the cycles render engine. And as you can see, I can see my cube just fine. It's got a, no colors or basically a gray. Um, same thing as my ground, but I can see a shadow here. I can also see my backdrop, which is this darker gray color. What I want to do is I want to get rid of the plane uh, in the scene, but keep the shadow that is on the plane. So basically I'm creating sort of like a green screen kind of a setup. With a green screen, you might have an actor, or in my case, a cube, and it'd be standing on a green screen. And if you took the green away, you would still keep the shadow uh, that's coming off of them starting at their feet. So same thing, idea here is we wanna get rid of the look or the color of this plane, but keep its shadow so we can put a new video background or image background uh, behind our character, in this case, a cube. To do that, I'm gonna select the object. I wanna turn into a shadow catcher object. And this is new, under the object tab, there is a section that has always been there, but you've probably ignored it, called cycle settings. If you open that up and you go down to the bottom, it's a new checkbox called shadow catcher. That's new. If you check that box, just like that, with one click, if you re-render the scene, which I'll do right now, you're gonna see your cube, you're gonna see the shadow, 
but the plane is gone. And this is really powerful. Again, the only way of doing this up until Blender 2.79 uh, was to mess around with um, render layers uh, and making sure that ren some some render layers uh, that you have to composite together um, were only showing the shadows on the objects uh, in those layers and then other layers would have to have um, the, the objects that look normal and that was a pain so this new feature under the cube tab under the cycle settings section called shadow catcher is a great feature so that's the quick version. Let's go ahead and continue on. I'm going to actually make a quick fun scene. I've got a video or a sequence of images that I've um, made from a video uh, of a field, a school field, um, just behind the office where I was working this, this summer. Um, it's summertime, so there's almost nobody on the field. But this video was shot again with a tripod, so we're going to make a spaceship come and look like it's hovering over the field and the, the the effect here is that we're making it look kind of good we're going to do this very quickly but there will be a shadow on the field that looks accurate for the scene and for the lighting in the scene so continue watching if you want to see things like or learn things like how to adjust the lighting in the scene with the shadow catcher object how to make the shadow catcher object actually reflect the same color as the ground below it so in this case the shadow catcher object will kind of be bouncing green light back up onto the spaceship we're going to make the light match and the shadows match and be able to adjust the transparency of shadows so let's go ahead and jump in um, if you're not familiar with how to create a sequence of images jpeg images in this case from a video file i'll put a link on the screen right now um, on how to do that or i'll put a link um, on the screen in which i did that i'm not sure if i have a video exclusively on how to do that so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna split my window into two uh, you can do that by grabbing this little cross hatched area up here and if you left click and drag on that little triangle um, you can split your your window into two so now I have two 3d viewports where there was just one and I'm gonna change this upper window now into a node editor window if you watch any other videos in this series you'll be familiar with this it's in this node editor window that we can do compositing combining different video and image sources together uh, and layer them together and adjust them uh, to create one final product in order to use compositing nodes you have to check this little or click this little button with the stacked photos that's compositing nodes and I'm going to click on use nodes backdrop and auto render nodes are these little boxes that are connected by what are called noodles yes that's what they're called noodles and this node right here is the render layers node which is basically an input it inputs whatever you have in your 3d scene in this case just a cube and a shadow catcher plane this node is our output it's what we need it's called the composite node it's what we need to be able to render out um, our scenes draw our scenes into video files or images and save them to our computer so basically we have an input and an output i need another video though but i'm actually going to bring that in down in the 3d viewport first i'm going to add that video that i just showed you uh, the school field um, into the background of this uh, 3d viewport through the camera so i have to make sure i'm viewing through my camera and I'm gonna to go to my background images section in this end properties panel and check that. And I'll open that up. And we're gonna add a background image to this window. So I'll click on add image. And I'm gonna to go to open. We're opening an image here. Actually, we're gonna open on my desktop in this folder all of the images at once. So to select them all, I'm gonna press A on my keyboard a few times to make sure everything is selected. And this sequence happens to be 500 frames long. That's fine. I'll click on open image with all of them selected. And once we do that, you're gonna see down here in this background images section that has recognized this image as actually being part of an image sequence. It's also recognized that um, it starts at frame one and it's 500 frames long. So if by chance I'm at frame zero, you won't see a background. But if you go to frame one, because that's when it actually starts, you'll see the background and that's what I want. To get that into my compositing nodes, because if I render out, it's still not gonna show that video in the background. If I wanna add that to my composite, I'm gonna press shift A on my keyboard up here 
and I'm going to add a new input. We're going to bring in the same image sequence, so I'll use image. I'll put that over here. I don't have to click on open. I can just click on this little picture icon because we've already brought that sequence of images into Blender. So I'm going to click on 001.jpg, uh, and there it is right there. Now, of course, to combine I'm going to move this over. To combine um, two picture or video sources together, we have to use that node. So I'll press Shift A to add it. Uh, we have to use that node called Color Alpha Over, or it's in the color category. Alpha Over is a node that lets you combine two images together and layer them one on top of the other. I'm going to drag that node into this doodle. And I'm going to connect up the video background as well. If I try to render out though, it's not going to look very good for a couple of reasons. The first reason is um, that these two noodles are going into the wrong ports. Um, when you want a video background, the background actually goes into the upper port and what goes on top um, actually needs to go into the lower port. It's kind of backwards, but that's just the way that it is. The next little step I have to do is, and I would recommend this for whenever you're stacking videos that have transparent sections, is you need to check this convert pre-multiply checkbox. Just do it, it's a good habit. It'll improve the way that your transparent areas look on top of the rest of your video. The next thing we have to do is make sure that Cycles is rendering out a transparent video because now it's all set up, but if I press the render button, you're gonna see that Cycles is rendering out with a gray background instead of the video and so we need to have it render out transparent instead of that background sky color so under the camera tab the way you do this is under the film section you're going to check the transparent checkbox once you do that blender cycles will render out to transparent and then it'll use the compositing nodes to uh, combine the video together with your cube so if i click on render now i've checked transparent under the film section there we go. I've got my cube. It's rendering out. And I can see that there's some shadow. I'm seeing this checkerboard pattern, which means transparency. And I've got my cube. Doesn't that look great? No, it does not, uh, because the camera is not at all in the right position. And my render sizes are all wrong. So let's go ahead and press escape. I'm going to change under the camera tab my render resolution. It's set to its default, which is 50% of 1080p. My video of the school happens to be 1080p exactly, so we want my render settings to match the size of the video. And so now I want to adjust the camera and because I have lock camera to view checked, I can orbit my camera and, and zoom in and out and pan. So I'm gonna do that and kind of try to get it to look like the cube is sitting on the field. I can actually also select the edge of my camera by right clicking on it and I can rotate my camera to make it look like the um, back of that plane is kind of lining up with the back of the field, kind of like that. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more and rotate the camera a little bit like that. And this is sort of just up to your eye what you think looks about right. If you're kind of too high up like that, obviously that does not look good. So I would orbit that around and move that down a little bit and just try to get it, eyeball it so that it looks about right. Um, I'm going to leave it at that, I think. Maybe I'll rotate the camera a little bit. I'm going to scale out. Actually, I'll press tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to scale that cube out in edit mode by just grabbing the edges at the sides and kind of dragging them around so that they kind of match up with the, uh, uh, the, the field in the, in the video. And I'll tap S with this lower edge selected to scale it up. And maybe I'll move it over. Maybe I'll move that edge over. Maybe I'll rotate that on the z-axis and move it up. I'm not gonna be too picky here. Well, it looks pretty good to me. Again, we're not going for photorealism here. I'm just showing you how to do it. Okay, let's go ahead and press tab to go back into object mode. And let's go ahead and see how this looks. If I click on render, we've got the shadow catcher object set up. We've got our compositing nodes. We've got it transparent. We fixed our render scaling to 100%. Let's go ahead and click on render and Okay, so our cube is now sitting in the field, kind of, it looks about right, but the lighting is all wrong. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up my lamp, but I'm also going to make sure that the ground is sort of uh, bouncing up this same green color, because in the real world, if you had a gray cube sitting on a field, it would start to look a little bit green from the, the light bouncing off of, of the grass, and it would look a little bit blue at the top because the blue light would be coming down from the sky. So first things first, I'm going to select my lamp, and my lamp is all wrong. My lamp is a point. Well, we want a sun, and the lamp is not in the right spot, because if I look over at kind of the base of the school, the sun is kind of over here, and so the shadows are being cast, you know, left to right and kind of towards us a little bit, and you can kind of see that there as well. There's something off screen that's casting a shadow. Uh, from left to right. So I'm gonna grab that lamp and move it over to there and move it up and I'll go to my top view and if our camera is over there we want the sun to kind of be uh, over there. There's my whoops there's my camera there's my cube and there's my lamp and if I go to my side view we can kind of am orthographic with five the five key on your number pad, you can kind of see there is a setup that we have, which looks pretty good. I'm going to select that lamp, and I'm going to make it into a sun lamp and not just a point lamp. So I'll click on sun, sun lamps. It doesn't really matter where they are so much, so putting it up there might not have really helped, but it matters kind of which direction they're pointing. So I'm going to point it kind of with the R key to rotate it. Um, I'll rotate it so it's kind of like that, and I'll rotate it so it's kind of from the top view kind of like that. The sun is also incredibly small by default, um, and that will affect how sharp the shadows look in your scene. And of course, the light is way too dull. It's not strong enough. So I'm gonna click on Use Nodes under the camera or, or under the lamp tab with the lamp selected, and that will allow me to change its strength. I'm gonna change that up to maybe four, I think, and I'll see how that looks. The shadows should look a bit better now. I'll try rendering that out. First though, I'll change my samples. Um, by default, they're at 128. That's quite high, which means I'm getting slow render times. So I'll change that to 32 just to see how it looks. And I'll click on render. Okay, so it looks a bit better. It might be a little bit too bright. So maybe four was a little bit too much. Um, what I also want to do is create a blue cast from the sky and a green cast from the floor. To make a green cast from the floor, I'm just going to actually give my ground a green material. So I'll select it, go to my materials tab, click on new, and we're just going to use a basic diffuse material for now. I'm going to make it slightly gr greeny yellow, just a little bit, not too, too much. Same thing with the sky color under the world tab. I'll change my surface of the world from this gray color to a slightly lighter, not all the way up, but slightly lighter and slightly blue, sky blue color. Uh, just enough to create a little bit of a cast we don't want too much. Again, the lamp was too bright, so I'm going to select it, go to my lamp tab, and I'll change it down to about three. I can also now change this to just a little bit blue. Not crazy, just a little tiny bit. And let's go and see how that looks. I'll go back and re-render this out. So it's looking pretty good. What I might want to do is I might want to um, make the sky a little bit darker uh, because when you have a sky with any color, it's going to light the scene in cycles. Uh, and that will also help us make the shadows darker. Right now, the contrast in our scene is quite low because you know we have this big kind of uh, sky that's this color that's pushing light all around the scene, and that will affect how dark or light the shadows are. So if I make this darker, the sky darker, and I re-render out, I'm probably going to get more of an influence on my scene from the lamp, which will then make my uh, shadows darker. Okay, so I'll render that out again, and we'll see a bit of a difference there, hopefully. Yeah, so the shadows are darker. If I move my uh, cube up, though, and re-render the scene, we're now going to have a shadow on the ground, and we're going to have a hovering cube. Um, and if we want to adjust the shadows, we can in terms of how blurry the shadows are. And again, that comes down to how big your lamp or light source is. So this lamp under the uh, lamp sun tab is only 0.1. If I change that up to something like 0.5 and I re-render, when you have a bigger lamp, you're going to have um, more fuzziness in the edge of your shadows. So if we look at this, 
you know, it's much less visible. It's way too much of a blur uh, compared to the, the shadows that are on the ground from the, the tree that I'm standing underneath. So if I go back to the uh, sun tab and I change this to be 0 0.15, that might be better. Uh, sunlight tends to be, especially direct sunlight without clouds, tends to be very direct and have very little diffuse. So it creates harsh shadows. If you go all the way down to zero for your size of your lamp, um, it'll create really sharp, jaggy looking shadows. We don't want that. Let's go and see what 0 0.15 looks like. I believe that's what I had. Yeah, 0 0.15. I kind of like that. It doesn't look too bad. I might want to make my shadows more transparent, uh, depending on my scene. To make your shadows more transparent, of course, you can change the color of your sky to be a bit brighter. That will kind of lighten up your scene and make your shadows not quite so dark. You also might try making your ground have a mixture of translucent and of um, a color diffuse material. So with my ground selected, I've just got under the materials tab a single diffuse uh, shader that's this kind of light green color. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that to a uh, mix shader and what a mix shader will let you do is mix together two other shaders so i'm actually going to bring in uh to this top one a, a diffuse shader same as what we had before uh, and i'll make it a little bit green yellow just like before but if i collapse that now that's the first one i'm combining but i'm going to combine that with a translucent shader and i found that it works better with translucent then transparent. So I'll make this one a little bit greeny yellow as well. And what that will do, if I go to my uh, this window and I change it to a rendered viewport shading and I change my background image to full opacity. Yeah, right there. Um, if I play with this factor, I can make the, the shadow very transparent or if I change it all the way down to diffuse, I can make it very harsh. This is not a very accurate uh, representation though. It only starts to get transparent really up to about 80, uh, after 80 or so, and that's not accurate. So you will have to do an actual render out. Uh, we're at, let's say 0 0.8 there. If I render that out, yeah, 0 0.8 actually will make it look uh, quite a bit more transparent. If I go back to that materials tab and change this up all the way to one or all the way to zero, pardon me, and I go and re-render it, you're gonna see that it is now gonna be at full strength, full opacity. So you can play with that. Um, let's go ahead and do something uh, fun really quick. I'm going to delete my cube. So I'll press escape actually, and I'll change this window back into material view. I'm gonna delete my cube. I'll break out of my camera. I'll press uh, X on my keyboard to select the cube and delete it. I'm gonna press shift A. I'm gonna add a UV sphere. I'm gonna move it up a little bit and I'll tap S to scale it up and I'll tap S and then Z to scale it down. We're gonna make a quick flying saucer just for fun and it'll be sitting over the field. Let's see how big that is. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. Be a little bit more squashed with S and then Z. I'm gonna press Shift uh, A on my keyboard again. We're gonna add another uh, UV sphere. We're gonna move it up. I'll scale it up a little bit. And from the front, uh, pers or front orthographic view uh, with the one and then five key on my keyboard, I'm gonna take that um, ball and I'm gonna press tab to go into edit mode. I'm gonna select all the vertices on the bottom of the mesh. So if I click this little button, it'll make it see through so I can see the back vertices and the front vertices. I wanna make sure that button is light and not dark. And if I go to my front view, I can press A to deselect all, B to box select, and box select will let me click and drag a box selection around the bottom half and because this button down here is light I can select the front and the back uh, of it all at once. I'm going to press X and delete those vertices and I'm going to create a loop cut. Actually I'm going to just extrude out uh, the edge at the bottom so if I hold the alt key on my keyboard and select that edge ring if you select or right click on one edge, it selects just one edge, but if you hold Alt and right click on an edge, it selects the whole edge loop. So now I can go to my front view and I'll tap E 
to extrude that and I'll tap Z to make sure it only goes up and down. I'm going to scale that out. Basically we just extruded out an edge loop there. Um, I'm going to scale that to be a little bit more uh, small and I'm going to hold Alt and select this edge loop and bevel it with Control B and I'll scroll up a few times to make it a smoother bevel like that. So Control B is bevel. I'm going to now combine those two objects together. Uh, actually, I'll press tab first. I'm going to move the top bubble part of it or uh, cockpit part of the spaceship down. I'm going to make both objects have shading smooth over here in the tool shelf. Uh, that one is now smooth. That one is now smooth. I'm going to make uh, the bottom of the flying saucer have a glossy dark material. So I'll click on new under the materials tab. I'm going to make the material not diffuse but glossy. Uh, I'm going to make it a darker shade so not um, white but kind of a darker gray and I'm going to turn the roughness up just slightly. Uh, the bubble over the cockpit is going to be a bit more complicated. I'm going to click on new uh, to add a material but we're going to make it into a mix shader and I'm going to combine a transparent shader with a glossy shader and that will allow me to create kind of a glass uh, material and if I combine that actually I'm going to go into render view so I can see what that will look like and go through my camera view so I can kind of see what that will look like if I change this factor I can change the amount of transparency uh, down to zero or full transparency or full glossiness in this case I'm going to select um, somewhere down by near 0.3 sure that looks good to me now because I have the ground plane object if I go back into um, material view as a green color even though it's a shadow catcher object it will still reflect green back up onto the, the flying saucer and the blue sky will still uh, because I set my world sky to a little bit more blue it will still appear more blue on the top of the object so if I parent the bubble if I hold uh, if I select it and hold shift and select the flying saucer and press uh, control actually will join them control J for join I can now make an animation of my flying saucer coming down from the sky and landing on the field but I'm just gonna put it a little bit above the field and let's go ahead and see what that looks like if I render that out and we have a really silly scene of a spaceship coming down and landing I think the material on the flying saucer is too dark though um, and maybe too uh, not quite rough enough so I'm gonna press escape I'll go to the materials tab and I'm gonna make um, the bottom material be more rough and be a bit be a bit lighter in color and I'm gonna make the glass maybe not a mix shader maybe just glass um, and that way it will look a bit more realistic so I'm gonna go back to render viewport shading and roughness IOR no you know what I'm gonna undo that I'm going to leave it as the mix shader and I'm going to make it so that there's very little roughness uh, on the uh, glossy shader. So I'll turn that down a little bit and then I'm going to make sure that it's just almost transparent. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. I'm going to move the ship straight down to be a bit closer. I'm going to scale it down so it looks like it belongs in the scene a bit better. Let's go ahead and render that out. And I'm going to quickly make the bubble dome a little bit more uh, visible. So I'm going to adjust the factor on that object uh, of the material um, so that it's not quite so transparent. I'll turn the factor up so we can see that a bit better. You will still be able to see the school through the window though because it is a transparent shader and because it is a white color uh, that means it will be transparent. So let's go ahead and render that out. And you know what? I think the scene needs to be a little bit brighter and I'm going to adjust the transparency of the shadow. So I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to go back to material viewport shading, select my lamp. I'm going to make my lamp a little bit brighter, maybe up to 4.5. And let's go ahead and see how that looks. Actually, what I think I'll do is I'm going to increase the brightness of the sky to give it kind of a more even lighting in the scene. And if I increase the brightness of the sky, that will also increase um, or decrease the darkness of the shadow. So I'll press escape. I'll go to my world tab. I'm going to make that sky just a little bit brighter. 
uh, and maybe a little bit more blue and I'll try rendering that out again and what I'll do is I'm gonna make the the shadow a little bit more transparent just a little tiny bit so uh, with the ground selected under the materials tab I'm going to change the factor of the ground and I'm gonna go to viewport shading rendered so I can see the influence here if I slide it up the factor up from zero uh, to a to a higher number let's try 0 0.5 that will make the shadows more transparent of course it does not give a good preview in this window I think that is a little bit too transparent so I'll go back and I'll change it to me 0.25 half as much let's try rendering that out again and you know what for our purposes that is looking pretty good so that will be it for this video uh, please if you like this video or if you learned something go ahead and click on that like button below and if you want to see more videos just like this one in blender and in tech click on that subscribe button as well as always check out my facebook page at facebook.com borncg on that page i give sneak peeks of what i'm working on next and that's where i communicate with my viewers the most but that'll be it for this one thanks for watching Bye bye